I have witnessed a lot of odd and curious objects when observing our night sky. I've witnessed celestial beasts and mythical creatures, but recently I had the good fortune of observing an astronomical curiosity during a rare celestial event. This is the Blue-Eyed Dragon Nebula. Located in the Rho Opioki Cloud Complex are a number of different nebulae, each with its own striking appearance. Now these are a variety of different celestial creatures. So just for a moment, I want you to stop what you're doing and just focus on these nebulae and come to your own conclusion on what it is you think you are seeing right now. I encourage you to leave a comment down below stating what it is that you think you've seen. And if not, feel free to read through the comments of other users and what they saw when observing these spectacular nebulae. Now, of course, they are not mythical beasts or celestial creatures. They are, in fact, massive clouds of dust and gas. Now, I like to refer to this as the Blue-Eyed Dragon Nebula, but that's largely in part because I've observed it during a rare celestial event. It's officially known as IC4592, which is just beautiful and elegant. The reason I think this looks like a Blue-Eyed Dragon is because recently, whilst imaging it, something passed nearby. Now, I was following the path of this comet, and I was trying to image it at separate stages as it was passing through our solar system, so I could get its location, in relation to our night sky and perhaps produce a nice trail as it moved throughout. But whilst I was following its path, I noticed that at a certain point it was going to pass nearby to a wonderful deep sky object. So in order to image this blue-eyed dragon nebula, I would need to use a telescope from a remote observatory located in a southern hemisphere. Thankfully, they have exactly that at Telescope Live, but this is where things start to get tricky. I needed to book time at a remote observatory using a telescope during that exact period. And I also need the skies to be crystal clear. That is something that you can't buy. You cannot plan or anticipate what the weather is going to be months in advance. You just have to hope and if you believe in any gods, pray to them because it is incredibly frustrating when you put all this effort and time and consideration into planning this and then lo and behold, weather has prevented you from imaging your target. The irony of trying to image a cloud complex located hundreds or thousands of light years away but being restricted from doing so because you have clouds located just a few hundred meters away from you here on Earth. And I learned this the hard way a couple of months ago when I tried to image another comet passing to a nearby object, and that was Messier Object 3, which was a star cluster. Now, I've been planning this months and months in advance, and I had booked time on multiple telescopes, so I was very excited about it. The comet was going to be passing almost through the star cluster itself. It was going to look gorgeous. I was really excited for it. But as the day got closer and closer, I started to realize that the weather was not looking very good. That was mistake one. Mistake two was the fact that I tried to image in color through separate filters. Now, in astrophotography, we generally don't image in just color like you would with your camera phone. We like to image in different filters, such as red, blue, green, and luminance. It allows us to produce a much higher quality image. So that's what I was doing to image this star cluster. I was imaging in red, blue, green, and luminance. So why is this a nightmare? Well, it's because if we image in those different filters, what actually happens is the background object, the star cluster, the nebulae, the galaxy, looks the same as you'd expect, but then you have this comet trailing across it. So yeah, I was really excited for it and it ended up being a disaster. And what's more heartbreaking is I knew planning this image that it was going to be a spectacular image, that it was going to be a work of art, and it's going to be really special. And I was hoping to enter into Astronomy Photographer of the Year as my first re-entry ever since I was disqualified back in 2013. But given that the weather was pretty lousy here in the UK, it was lousy in Spain, I wonder if anyone else did manage to get a nice image of the star cluster and the comet passing nearby. This is the stargazing book for 2023. And oh, would you look at that? Mesia Object 3 and the comet that I was imaging. This image was taken by Damien Peach, who is a legendary astrophotographer. He has taken some of the most spectacular images that you would not believe were taken by an amateur. Growing up, it was the images that he managed to take of Jupiter that were always so inspiring. But yeah, this copy was bought for me by my mum for Christmas, and the second I opened it up, I was like, 
hang on, this looks familiar. But I've learned from my mistakes, I have learned what not to do, and I think I know how to fix my problems. So for the Blue-Eyed Dragon Nebula, I am not going to be imaging in red, blue, green, and luminance. Instead, I'm only going to image in luminance for at. I'm then going to combine this luminance imaging with an actual red, green, and blue shot of the Blue-Eyed Dragon Nebula as the background. So I'm going to overlay the comet's path over this picture, and then hopefully we'll get to see the universe in motion. This is my attempt at the Blue-Eyed Dragon Nebula. But when I finally finished the editing and watched it at least a hundred times, I then thought to myself how cool it would have been to image it for a longer period. But obviously there's limiting factors to that. The first one being is that the sun comes up, so it's not always nighttime. But then even then, the blue-eyed dragon nebula will eventually pass below the horizon, making it impossible to image here on Earth. So there's a lot of constricting factors that prohibit you from imaging an object for a long enough period to record its motion. Regardless, I decided to do a bit of editing myself and then managed to create my own animation that displays the full path of the comet as it travels across our full field of view of the blue-eyed dragon nebula. Enjoy. I'm going to be honest, when I get to capture things like this, it really does make my heart sort of flutter a little bit. Just when the images finally come through and you get to see all that's happened, like that's out there right now, but it's sort of under everyone's nose. No one can really see it happening without the aid of telescopes. And even then, it requires extremely long exposures to unlock the secrets of the universe. These aren't things that are happening in the blink of an eye. They are happening over the course of nights, months, years, and decades. So to be able to capture it, is a really special feeling and I think that's why so many of us are in love with astrophotography is because you get to image these wonderful secrets and these astronomical curiosities. So if you've enjoyed this astronomical curiosity and you want to see more make sure you're subscribed because I really enjoy talking about them and making these videos. I'm Dan Scotting and this was Astronomical.